our teachers hold an extremely important part in our society. They provide us with knowledge, problems, and wisdoms to better our futures. But what if one of these teachers received their tools through inappropriate means? Would this change your view of them and the insights that you've gained? This is the question of Dr. William Hunter, a renowned teacher of anatomy and obstetrics known for primarily detailed illustrations of dissections of full-term pregnancies. Today, he has been charged with the murder of 12 pregnant women in order to fulfill the requirements of his illustrations. Will this claim tarnish the legacy of this once great teacher? This is History versus William Hunter. Today I will prove beyond a shadow of reasonable doubt that the plaintiff is guilty of or is at least an accessory to murder in order to obtain the subjects of his studies. His genius was constantly held back by the confines of supply and demand of pregnant corpses. In his day, anatomists seeking near full-term pregnant corpses for dissection faced an impossible task with it being mostly mathematically impossible. It is believed that his co-workers must have commissioned many murders in order to carry out their work, many of these corpses being suspected of being attained from poorhouses. I will show you that the evidence in this case points to Dr. William Hunter being at worst an active person in these murders and is at least complicit of them. Your Honor, Dr. William Hunter was a great anatomist and changed the field of obstetrics as we know it. The prosecution's claim that he murdered to get his specimens is absurd. His illustrations were groundbreaking. Why is it that it seems more likely that he murdered women than simply that he preserved and collected them like the skillful anatomist he was? It is clear that he is a murderer because the statistical evidence clearly comes to that conclusion. In fact, a paper from 1785 by Joseph Clark reported that from 1752 to 1784, only 229 women had died in childbirth out of 10,000 deliveries, only 1% with that number decreasing in later years. It is highly unlikely that 12 healthy pregnant women at this time would die prior to childbirth and thus have an intact fetus. Excuse me, but Dr. Hunter clearly states that of the 34 illustrations, only three were from full-term women, and one body contributed to 10 of his images. He would cover his specimens in wax and plaster, like most anatomists of his day, making it easier to preserve these three women over the five-year time frame. Statistics from London in the 18th century show that death rates exceeded birth rates. As fatal diseases such as consumption, smallpox, and typhus were pre prevalent, those worst affected by these diseases were children and elderly. Most deaths were in these age categories rather than healthy women who were likely to recover. Thus, it again is highly unlikely that there were many healthy women who ha would have died within these days of childbirth. I treat these charges as slanderous. There had been no claims during that time of my client being part of such actions. All of these charges are based on the claims of the self-described and non-peer-reviewed historian Don Shelton, but no claims were ever substantiated, especially after they were sensationalized by the media. Are we going to set precedent here using stats to claim murder? Claims with no actual concrete evidence? I agree it would be nearly impossible to obtain concrete evidence of murders that were committed in the 18th century. However, the laws of probability strongly support our assertions that he had to be at least knowledgeable of the actions. There is, however, one piece of direct evidence that cannot be ignored, that Dr. Hunter was procuring and dissecting these women without Dr. Smiley's, his former supervisor's knowledge, which caused tension between them. For the leading steps to such a discovery could not be kept a secret. How can we deny this evidence that he murdered these women? If we are going by the laws of probability, then it is equally, if not more likely, that specimens were obtained through grave digging, a common practice in the 18th century. Many medical community members and anatomists would pay for bodies from grave diggers to understand the unknown human form at that time. 
Hunter, working in the medical field, had connections. Would he have risked his successful career by being an accomplice to murder? That is a hard theory to disprove because Dr. Hunter makes no reference to where he got all but one of his bodies. You do make a strong point. Although it may not be as far as murder, it seems questionable where exactly he received his specimens. We may never know exactly where Dr. William Hunter collected his models, but more likely than not, it was through some unethical means. Despite this, it is hard to deny the effect that William Hunter's images had on the field of both anatomy and obstetrics. It would be over two centuries before more complex prenatal imaging developed. Do the lives that were saved outweigh those that were abused? These are the questions when history is on trial.